Hey everyone, welcome to Signal Processing with Paul. And in this video, I wanna start talking about some basic circuit theory. Now, circuits were my least favorite part of physics. Um, it was one of the reasons I was not interested in electrical engineering to begin with. Circuits confused the heck out of me. I didn't understand them. And yet here I am as an electrical engineer, uh, going for a PhD in electrical engineering. So I eventually got past it, I eventually understood it, but this stuff was very confusing to me because it's not something we necessarily have an intuition about. However, I think we can use some useful analogies to hopefully, I guess, get an idea of, of what's pretty much going on. So within a circuit, you have what we call a wire, and inside this wire, it's usually made of metal, you have these things called electrons. And when you apply a voltage, what happens is, is the electrons, which are negatively charged, um, basically will, will move along the metal. The, the electrons that are in this, this metal material are going to move because they're kind of these free electrons. They, they often talk about a sea of electrons. And as they move, this produces current. Now, I don't want to get too far into the weeds, into the physics of this, but I want you to understand or appreciate that what's going on here is when you have, let's say, a source here, like a, like a battery. So let's say this is a nine volt battery. What we can imagine this battery doing is creating a voltage difference. And this, this voltage, which is sort of like a potential, is what causes electrons to move along the wire. And because electrons are negatively charged, often you they, they will go towards the positive end, so it'll go like this. But sometimes we write the arrow in the other direction and we kind of just reverse it. it this is gonna annoy you to no end because we like to play fast and loose with these directions. Just remember, in theory, even though you go, um, the battery is gonna go from minus to plus, and we may draw the arrow this way, dictating current, the actual current that's flowing due to ele free electrons moving is actually in the direction towards the positive end. So that's something to just remember. Now, the analogy here that I think is gonna make this very useful is I want you to think about, rather than thinking about water, or sorry, than thinking about electrons and, and wire and metal, is what I want you to do is think about water. What I want you to do is imagine, rather than a battery that has a voltage, I want you to think about something like a, a fan, or I guess this would be something in the water here, and in this case, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a pipe of water that's gonna go around, and then what's gonna happen is you're going to have, you know, this would be like a resistor, like a load or a light bulb. You're gonna have some part, so this is like something like this, and then it loops back around. And in this case, um, voltage, where we have a difference in potential electric, potential energy, is gonna to correspond to water pressure. So a lot of times we model a battery as what we call a voltage source, something that will go from, let's say zero volts to nine volts. Once again, voltages, these are often relative. We talk about uh, potential energy in terms of differences. So we say, you know, zero, the, the difference here is gonna be nine volts because we go from, you know, zero to nine. So these things are, are this way. And likewise, we can imagine this, this water pump or whatever, going from you know zero water pressure, like PSI, and as the water goes through it, it brings it up to, I don't know, nine, P some units of pressure, right? You can imagine this being, being units of pressure. And likewise, what I want you to do is think about current as sort of water flow. So what's gonna happen is we're going to, basically as water, is moving through here. You're gonna have a lot of water, and then as what's gonna happen is eventually you're going to have things that reduce the pressure. Now, this analogy can be taken really for a lot further, and that's what we're gonna do when we start talking about capacitors and inductors. There are water analogies that will hopefully give you an intuition for what's going on. Um, for instance, when we're modeling circuits, we often consider the wire to be an ideal wire. But we do know that the wire has some resistance along it. And similarly, what we're going to do in our sort of water examples is we're going to imagine that as the water's flowing, it's not losing any pressure until it reduce until it reaches basically a load or a place in which the pipe kind of narrows down and you you're relieving some of that water pressure as the water is sort of squeezing through some particular end. And just as we have you know, these resistors, this would be like a resistor, which resists the flow of current according to some value R, you're going to have these areas in water where 
the pipe narrows down or it has to, you know, the water has to kind of do something crazy here <laughs> to get through. And that's going to relieve the pressure that allows it to kind of um, go back to where it was. And then once again, that water is going to then hit this pump again and start, I guess, gaining pressure in the first place. So that's, that's where I want you to, that, that's what I want you to think about in terms of what is going on in this particular case. Now, what's going to happen because there's no, you know, voltage in this battery, what's going to happen is this entire load is going to have to be dissipated along this resistor. So if there are nine volts that if we go from like zero volts to nine volts, that the difference here is nine volts, what's going to happen is the sort of electric potential or the voltage here is going to be nine volts and coming out of here is zero volts. And as a result, we can calculate the current here using Ohm's law, which is just saying basically this is V equals I times R, or in other words, dividing by R, we have I equals V over R. So if we suppose in our case, R equaled say two, we would have that our current is going to be nine volts over two ohms, and this equals 4.5 amps. So basically, depending on the, um, on how resistive this thing is to flow is going to determine the amount of amp, or basically the, the flow or the rate at which things are moving. And likewise, if we think of resistance, a higher resistance, basically resisting the flow of electricity more, we can likewise think of a higher resistance in a pipe as basically really resisting the flow of water a lot as well. So, you know, you, a, a high resistance would correspond to, you know, a really, really narrow area where all of the water has to squeeze through here. And as a result, if you think about what's going on here, if you have a higher resistance, you're going to have less flow because there is a lot more blockage. And similarly, if we consider this, you know, V equals IR in this particular case, we would say flow is pretty much equal to the pressure, the water pressure that divided by the sort of, I, I do want to say the resistance. So that, that's what I'm going to say, the resistance. So it should make sense that as we have more pressure that's generated, the water is gonna to wanna to flow more. So we see this here in the numerator. And as we add more resistance, for instance, as we say, have, have a really, really narrow path, it's going to decrease our flow. Whereas if we have a really, really large path for the water to flow and we increase the pressure, a lot more water is gonna flow. The rate of sort of water moving throughout is gonna be a lot higher. So we see this both in, in, in circuits. Once again, if you have zero resistance, you're pretty much dividing by zero, which means there's nothing impeding the path. You have pure potential and it's just going zoom through, through this circuit. And similarly, when we have no resistance in our water pipe, we're basically imagining all of this stuff to be ideal. It's just gonna shoot up in, as the pressure, if there's any difference in pressure, the flow is just gonna shoot up to infinity. So we have to imagine that there is some amount of I guess, pressure that's, that's at least some resistance to the flow of water in this particular case. So um, in the next couple of videos, what we're going to be doing is talking about what we do when we have multiple sort of um, in series, when we have multiple different, I guess, resistors, resistors to, to movement, resistances to movement. So we'll see that.